Well, silver's come down in price again, which means that it's time to buy, isn't it? That's what everybody always says. And yeah, I would agree. Silver's a great buy right now, if you do it right. There are two different approaches that I'm gonna talk about in today's video. The first is buying a giant batch of silver like I did, 25 kilos all in one go at a much higher price than today's price. Oh, that was a regretty spaghetti moment. Or you could take a bit more of a conservative approach and buy just a little bit of silver here and there every couple of days, weeks or months and end up with a big batch that maybe is a little bit safer. Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here and a very warm welcome to you all joining me for another Precious Metal Ramble. Now silver's price has dropped a fair amount over the last couple of weeks, which does represent a great buying opportunity to get more silver for your money than you could before. But if, like me, you locked in a giant purchase of 25 kilo bars, you might have a bit of a regretty spaghetti moment that you did a bulk purchase rather than dollar cost average over time. So which is better? I'm gonna share some of my insights as to which I think is better and why I made the decision to buy 25 kilos all in one go, which arguably, now with hindsight, was the wrong decision. But ultimately, they both have their pluses and minuses. So we're gonna share some of those thoughts and insights. And as always, when you see prices drop, just be very careful. Social media land will start bombarding people with now is the time to back up the truck. And if you do go and back up the truck with a giant bulk purchase, you might be missing out on even lower prices that would come around the corner. Or like me, you'd end up in a little bit of trouble if you go too far in. Well, I'm not in trouble, but from paper perspective, I've lost a fair amount of equity in these big kilo silver bars I've bought. But that is the nature of silver and gold. They go up and down. So. If you are enjoying our content as we go throughout this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed, then please subscribe. If you enjoy this content, it's a good chance you'll enjoy some of the other things that we've got to talk about here on this channel. So dollar cost averaging versus a big bulk purchase. I think if I explain a little bit about my background and story of the silver journey I've been on over these last now nine years, I first purchased a bunch of silver back in 2015, before I was even on YouTube. I bought about 100 ounces worth. I'd got the bug, I'd watched a bunch of videos on YouTube, and I'd read a bunch of articles about how well-priced silver was at the time, and boy was it, because it was like nine pounds an ounce spot price. And I went and I bought some silver. I bought it from Europe, and I got it at a decent price without VAT. And I bought all in one go. We had decided that 100 ounces, which at the time was around about 1,100, 1,200 pounds after shipping and the premiums, was the right amount to kind of dabble into this game. And I didn't think much more of it. I put them in a drawer and left them for a good year until I then got them back out again, started my YouTube channel, started pouring some silver and the rest is history. Oh no, we've lost one. You can hear it dropping on the floor. Never mind. that's also part of silver. Oh my God, it's literally rolled right under the sofa. Okay, never mind. I'll have to go find that later. The point here that I'm trying to make is that when you are looking to get into silver, if you've got a certain budget to get into silver, then sometimes front loading it is a better course of action. It's all done, it's all in one go. You don't have to worry about taking multiple shipments, paying multiple shipping fees. You often get a better price if you buy in bulk. And that was the decision I made and it was great. We used some savings. Of course, now looking back at it, those coins are some of the most profitable ones that we've ever had. I can't even remember where I've put that original batch. I think it's in a couple of tubes somewhere in the back of some of the secure storage we've got. But it's there for 20, 30 years time. You know, it'll have a 40 year life cycle. It'll do very well over time. That's my way of thinking. But of course, I have bought a lot more silver and gold over the years than just that first initial batch of 100 ounces. Indeed, when I got back into silver, I say, you know, I was never out of it, I suppose. But when I started creating content on YouTube, I fell down that rabbit hole even further and then I was investing in silver for content's sake and it was just part and parcel of that journey. And we bought a lot over time. I rode the waves of silver price increases all the way from that nine pounds an ounce all the way up to recently buying that 25 kilo batch at over, uh, well, I think at the time of purchase it was like 24 pounds an ounce, something like that. I can't remember the exact pound per ounce. I paid 800 a kilo. You know, it's, it's a big price increase compared with those first initial days. And the same is said for gold. I bought a lot of gold over that time and I've dollar cost averaged the gold. Of course, the reason you do that is because whilst we had some savings, we didn't want to go all in on anything. You know, here we see a coin I bought for 1,015 pounds back in 2017. And those have all performed 
exceptionally well. Now with hindsight, maybe we should have just put everything on gold back then, but that's a very risky proposition to do. So always have that in the back of your mind when you're looking to invest larger sums of money and savings into precious metals. Now, before we jump into the rest of the video, a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Alaska Energy Metals, whose ticker symbol is AKEMF, and that can be found down in the description box below. You can also find links to their website and corporate presentation, which we're going to have a quick look at here today. Now, Alaska Energy Metals are focused on one of the most important base metals, which is used within electric vehicle batteries, nickel. Now, it's important to remind you that I am not offering financial advice. They are a junior exploration company, which is a little bit more of a risky investment than physical assets like gold and silver. But it is something to have a look at if you have an interest in this area. Now, with the ever-growing demand for sustainable energy and the development of electric vehicles in the US and around the world, nickel, cobalt and lithium's demand is set to increase by potentially up to 23 times over the next 10 years according to some sources anyway. In every electric vehicle car battery, there is approximately 29 kilos of nickel, a demand that cannot be ignored by the ever-growing sector of electric vehicles. Even the great Elon Musk himself has claimed that it is so important to get this base metal out of the ground to help develop the technology of electric vehicles. Alaska Energy Metals have recently brought on a number of very experienced and talented individuals with proven track records at developing the kind of projects that will potentially yield big results for the US nickel sector. Ian Stalker, Tyrone, Brayton Back and Paul Matiek will help guide and develop the summer 2024 Nikolai project, which is one of the only continental USA nickel mining projects. Drilling and testing over the coming months could yield a large potential upside in nickel deposits and potentially up to eight billion pounds worth of nickel. Now, with all that said, this is not investment advice and I would caution anybody to do their own in-depth research before investing in Alaska Energy Metals. If you're interested, go and check them out. There's a link in the description box below to all of the bits that you've seen here today, including their corporate presentation, which is well worth a look. Once again, thank you to Alaska Energy Metals for sponsoring today's video. Now back on with our main topic. So dollar cost averaging over time has certainly been a really beneficial proposition to me. But in that time period of dollar cost averaging, if there's been a moment where I've got a certain proportion of savings that I want to, uh, want to sort of liquidate in cash form and put it into precious metal form, I've done the approach of front loading. So, you know, buying a couple of thousand pounds a month worth of gold over that time period is not something that is generally affordable from monthly earnings and incomes. But when you have some savings put aside that you wanted to have as an investment vehicle for something else, then having it just converted into gold rather than say having some stocks and shares or cash in a non-producing, very low interest account like it was way before COVID, you know, you'd get like pittance on interest accounts. So having it in something other than cash was really important to me. So I was sort of front loading along the way. So it's interesting, dollar cost averaging and front loading along the way. But this was, I guess this is the kind of main message of it because we've been buying responsibly and buying sensibly within our means over the last near decade now, over this last nine years. Yeah, things have ramped up a little bit over that time period. And part of that is due to this YouTube channel and the exposure that I have as a content creator. I can get all of these exciting things for my channel. and I can show them and the life cycle of them. I can then maybe sell them at some point. And it's maybe net zeroed me and I've made some content for it. That was the general way I thought about things. I very quickly, of course, generated a business income from all the poured silver that I was creating. And that was very exciting to do, but also very daunting. If I had had some foresight, perhaps the best option, if I'd known how the business was gonna go, I'd have bought a thousand kilos of silver back in 2017 and just sat on a giant pile, melting it down slowly over time to demand. I have been making a lot more profit than I would have done going over that time period. But again, the risk reward is the thing you need to analyze. And with prices going down right now, let's bring it back down into the time present moment. You've got to think about the negative downsides. To use a word that I've been dying to use all video and I, I was gonna say it near the beginning and I forgot. You have a fiduciary responsibility to yourself. So a financial responsibility. Uh, I love that word, fiduciary responsibility to make sure that what you're doing is right. 
for you and for your circumstances. There may be other people out there and other media sources telling you otherwise, telling you that now you have to buy as much as possible because it's the best thing to do. But unfortunately, that is not always the case. And it might be right for them and it might be right for me, but it's not right for you. A lot of people out there, if they went out and they bought 25 kilos of silver like I did and then suddenly have this huge liability on paper, you know, on paper I've lost nearly 100 pounds a kilo on that, so that's two and a half thousand pounds in equity gone down. Not everyone has the luxury that I do of being able to sit on it, of being able to chop up those bars and of course make poured silver out of them, which attracts premium. That's part of my job, part of my life. But not everybody can do that. And so that's an important thing to think about. And if you've gone overboard, if you've put all of that money into one basket, all of those eggs into one basket, there we go, I didn't roll one off the table today, then you know, you might be in a bit of trouble. Very sticky wicket if something was to unexpectedly go wrong and you have to sell your silver and gold. And in fact, one of the things I've been thinking of lately that I got a couple of comments on in a previous video was how can we sell our silver and gold on our buyer's service for such cheap prices? You can buy these coins from the Royal Mint for £35 an ounce. Yeah, you can, but you can also buy them on the second-hand market for, well, I think at the moment, if the prices hold where they are, we're going to be selling at 23, 24 pounds an ounce for silver. You know, the unfortunate reality is that somebody has gone out and they've bought a whole bunch of silver from a bullion dealer. And then unfortunately, they've got to sell for whatever reason, or perhaps they've become disillusioned with their, you know, their investment and it's not performing how they want it to. So they sell it. And unfortunately, they're the ones losing money. We're the ones at the other end of it that are financially be benefiting from buying at a cheap price. And they're looking to sell it over that long period. So from my perspective, there are a great many different ways and means that you can look to invest in gold and silver. And with the prices going the way they're going right now, it's a good time to buy silver. Gold's still relatively high, but silver does seem pretty cheap, all things considered. And from my perspective and my experiences, if you're buying and holding for a very long time, then you're going to be just fine. Now, that's no financial guarantee. We can never say that. But ultimately, I think over the last nine years, you've just got to look at how much extra value is being created on some of the coins that I've got. This particular one here, I'd have to look up the exact pounds and pence number, but I remember buying these for about 140 pounds each. And just in spot value alone, they're a lot more. Now, over that long period of time, you might say that's not a particularly great return. And you'd be right in many ways. There are very many different investment products that will get you better returns, but they have different levels of risk and it's important to balance things out. So I guess my message from this is there is no one stop shop best approach to buying gold and silver beyond i think the only best thing that i can advise to anybody which is just buy sensibly don't go over what you can afford certainly don't go beyond what you can afford in a responsible way such that you would be forced to sell if something happened just be sensible about uh, sensible about it and also don't think that gold and silver are the best thing in the world they're not they are certainly underperforming compared with things like S&P 500 indexes and various other platforms. But those have their risk too. And we've certainly seen in this last week, the markets do a bit of a um, brown stuff hit the storm. No, that's the wrong phrase. Brown stuff hit the fan scenario. There's certainly been some turmoil in the markets to say the least. So a lot to think about and a lot to digest. And I do hope that all of you have found this an insightful and interesting video. It'd be great to get your insights on the world of buying silver and gold. Have you bought a large quantity? Do you buy in bulk? Do you front load your investments like I have? From my perspective, I feel like that's probably the better way to do it than buying one silver ounce a month. Maybe you can't afford to go in bulk and you wanna just look to buy a couple of ounces here and there or a sovereign every couple of months. That's also fine too. There are different approaches for different people in different financial circumstances. So, I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, don't forget to hit the like button and thumbs up. For my Backyard Bullion Ramblers, I do want to say a huge thank you. I'm now going to go and try and find that one quarter ounce Britannia that has slid somewhere underneath the sofa. I just watched it roll right off the table. So for the Cool Kids Club members, give that quarter ounce Britannia a shout out because it's gone for a long wander. I literally, sofa's a while away and I can't see where it's gone. So I'm going to go find it. Thanks all for watching. Do appreciate your viewership. It's very much appreciated. And we'll see you on the next video. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.